Hi, welcome to the seventh of 12 videos that covers how to use the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module to develop grind plans. In this video, we'll cover section seven, which is titled An Overview of ProVal's Auto Grind Function. So, we'll do a demonstration of ProVal's one grind function and the auto grind function. The one, the one grind function is necessary to better understand the auto grind function. We'll go ahead and just jump right into the software. So I've got that initial file that we down or we exported the first 12,000 feet of that six mile long job. And I've gone ahead and changed the, the short continuous to 160. I saved it under, under, under a template. So let's go ahead and go to the grinding screen. Okay, and initially this grinding screen shows up with a zero head height. So once I press grind, what this is going to do is essentially run the grinder from the very beginning of the project, or 12 and a half feet from the beginning of the project, to 12 and a half feet short of the end of the project, with the zero head height. And again, zero head height means that grinder head is in plane with the average front and back supporting elevations of the grinder. I've got a 14 and a half foot grinder loaded also, so we're going to press grind. So the software is now calculating all the elevations the grind, ground surface. So we can go ahead and go into short continuous and we can see, you know, what the roughness was, localized roughness was before and after. We can see a marketed improvement. We can also go to the fixed interval and get a, you know, a, a more summarized view it shows us the improvements every tenth of a mile. We can see that this is how rough it was at, for this tenth of a mile and here's after the grinding. So it was around 150. For a tenth mile now, it's around 70 appears. So I think we, yeah, we have this threshold set to 75 on this screen. So if we we can go ahead and zoom in. Whoops, I need to go to the short continuous screen. We can zoom into the profile by clicking, going to the tenth mile scale. Then this button here, we're gonna it look. It appears as if it's pressed in. We have to unpress it and press it again to get these to sync. I think that's a bug in this software. So, and we can go ahead and slide through. We can see the original profile of this left wheel track and what it, the profile will be or what the modeled elevations will be after we grind. So we can slide through here. We can see, yeah, it's, it appears that it's grinding all the way through here. These lines are definitely different. This ground elevation goes a little bit above it, but I think that's an op that's an offset that's in the software, and we'll explain that here, here in a second. So there are locations where when we're doing this one grind model from the end of the beginning of the job to the end of the job where the grinder head is actually above the surface, and you can tell when it's above the surface by finding locations where these lines are parallel to each other. So. For instance, right through here, these lines are, are parallel. The, gr the grinder head is in the air at this location. I'll try to find some more obvious locations where this is going on. Through here, it's in the air. And once it departs from being parallel, we're back into a grinding condition. So with this one grind model, we're basically taking that zero head height grinder and marching through the whole project, and we can see what the effects are on roughness. Okay, so that's the one grind function. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you something else here. So I, I went ahead and and printed out models from the same left wheel track. So if I took that one grind model and I raised the head one eighth of an inch above the plane, and I drove it through the whole job, the, most of the job the grinder head would not even hit. It doesn't look like there's any change in the roughness. There's a, where the where the road got really rough, that grinder head must have hit some of the high spots that were really sticking up and smoothed it out a little bit. So if I lower the grinder head down to a sixteenth of an inch, so that now that it's only a it's a sixteenth inch above that zero head height plane, you know we're gonna the grinder head's gonna intercept at more locations and do some more smoothing. So we'll we'll never do this. This you know we'll never raise the grinder head up in a model. There's not really any reason to do that. I just wanted to show you, give you an idea what's going on. So if I lower that grinder head to zero head, I, we can see a marked improvement in the surface. 
So we know with the zero head, I, it's going it, to, it may, well, anyways, it's going to daylight in, daylight out at a lot of different locations. And that's that initial view that we we're looking at on the profiles. If I lower it down to a sixteenth of an inch, I can get even more improvement. And there's something to note here that when we lower this grinder head blow plane, or even when we're at a zero head height, when we do this one grind model, you know, we're basically dropping that. In the model, we're lowering that grinder down with its given head height, and it may actually, you know, model a, a step into the surface. But from that point forward, there won't be any steps until we march it all the way through the end and it stops 12 and a half feet short, and there'll be a step. So when we look at some of these, you'll, you'll see that these first and last increments they actually got rougher the lower we went. And that's basically because if you went and looked at the profile at the beginning and the end, there's, there's steps. So you, I put a, a symbol on here saying to ignore these last two increments. So if we look at in general, the smoothness over these fixed increments. We can we can get some additional smoothness by lowering a sixteenth of an inch, but there's a point of no return where if we keep lowering this grinder head down, we're not really gaining any more smoothness. We can look at the sixteenth versus the eighth. If you look at those two, there's not much difference between what we have. I even went a, another step further and went to a half inch and it still doesn't do much good. That, and what the reason for that is, you know, when we're modeling a fixed frame grinder, meaning it's not running on automatics, it's just with a zero head height, we're just scalping the peaks of bumps off. And where there's valleys in the profile, you know, we're not really touching those. But once we start lowering that head height, yeah, we'll, we'll start cutting into some of those valleys. And eventually, if we lower it enough, you know, we're, we're probably, we're, if I lower it a half inch, I'm probably you know in a cut condition the whole way through the project but because I'm in a cut condition the front end of the grinder is still riding up and over all the bumps so the grinder head is going to rise up and down and up and down even though I'm in a cut, a cut condition so anyways the point is you know it's good to recognize that this fixed frame grinding method that we model in ProVal you know, it's, it's optimal for scalping the peaks of bumps off. If we start trying to use this model to scalp the peaks and the valleys in between peaks off, you know, it's, you're not really gaining any smoothness. So that's the point of these, these slides here. So then I also went into the auto grind function and I generated a grind list. I'll show you that in a second here, but I set an auto grind to 180 and 160 and we can see that when we get the auto grind listing, if I that's generated from a lo, from setting my localized roughness threshold to 180, I'll get a different product than if I lower it to 160. So I'll have a longer auto grind list if I lower my ALR threshold, and we can see that we're getting you know here we doesn't even appear the grinder was cutting into any bumps for this tenth of a mile. There's no change in the roughness, but here there was some more locations. So we'll go ahead and just go back to the ProVal software. So again, right now we're in the one, the one grind model, and we can see, you know, what the forecasted roughness was before and after. So let's go back to the grinding, and we'll we'll do the auto grind. Okay, so when I hit auto grind, it basically gives me a list of locations it's guessing it needs to grind so this auto grind is a function of th this value here that I put in the threshold if I lower this I'm going to get more locations so when we go to this auto grind function I click grind it'll it'll be somewhat obvious there's nothing written down in any manual anywhere that defines what logic they're using to come up with this list but you can somewhat take a guess here so we're gonna go ahead and zoom in we'll jump ahead a tenth mile at a time so here we can see we're looking at the localized roughness and this is our threshold set at 160 here's a location where the roughness went over 160 and it's given me 
you know, it's given me the grind location that looks like it starts here and ends at this location to address that, but it's also given me some grinds out in front of this, which is reducing the roughness. Well, if I get, I don't know how many locations are, we can go to that list and see how many locations are between this point and this point. I think there's three or four, might be two. The reality is we only need to grind this bump off to local, to reduce this localized roughness below. It's giving this these additional grinds out in front of this because it thinks we may need to use it for, I guess, to reduce minimize, to reduce mean roughness index. So here's another location where here, here's some extreme roughness, and this is a location I'll probably have to lower the head height to, to knock this bump off more. But it's given me, this is a location where it went over that threshold of 160, yet it's given me all these locations out 200, 250 feet in front of it. If I go 34, 20, 30, that's 100, 200, looks like 200, 250 feet or so. 250, close, maybe even 300. It's given me a list of locations that's out in front of this bump, even though I don't need them for this localized roughness. And if I implement these ones, I can see that I'm going to, you know, it's, we're going to make it smoother, but there's, we're not making it that much smoother. There's not much, that much area between these two lines. So we'd probably disable all these locations. And if we needed these to reduce mean roughness index, we'd re-enable them or we'd leave them enabled. So now here's a spot where this road got really rough and there's a lot of locations where the localized roughness went over this 160, this red line, and it's giving us all the grinds through this location. So anyways, that gives you a general idea how this auto grind function works. So it's guessing, it's going to give us this list of locations that's on this list, and we are going to leave some of these enabled and some we'll leave disabled. So let's go back real quick here. We'll, we'll go back to this one section here, this first bump. Okay, so here, here's that bump that looks like the grind starts at 1540, and then there's some grinds out in front of it. When we do, when we start analyzing and mod developing gr a grind plan, you know, we'll print this list out, and we'll have it in our hand, and we'll basically decide which grinds we don't need. And so I'm going to go ahead and keep the grind that's at 1540. Looks like it's 1530. I don't need this one. Looks like there's only one grind. So if I grind that now, we'll go back to 1540. Need to zoom back to the 10th mile scale. So there's that one grind. If you recall, we had some grinding taking place out here. It really didn't do much good, so we disabled it. So. You know, this would be a grind that we'd leave as enabled and we'd disable these. We would just continue doing this through this whole list. So the thing to understand is when it's hard to flip back and forth between these screens that show the list of grinds in this screen, so it's important to print that list out. And then we'll just highlight the grinds that you want to keep and then disable all the grinds you don't need and then you just you keep experimenting and that's essentially what we'll be doing when we use the auto grind list to develop a grind plan so that's the only way to get these locations is to click auto grind and sometimes we may need to lower the threshold to get enough grinds to lower to take address mean roughness index issues if we so Hopefully you have a decent understanding of how the auto grind function works and how we'll be using it later when we develop a grind plan. We'll go over that in more detail in some future videos coming up. That's the end of this video. Thanks.